Hello, I'm Diana Keel, Editor-in-Chief of Sherwood.com. Today we're talking to Dr. Brian Canterbury, who is a urologist with Akron General Hospital. Dr. Canterbury has agreed to talk to us today about prostate cancer and its various treatment options. He's also agreed to take questions from our members that have come in over the internet. Dr. Canterbury, before we get to questions from our members, I'd like to ask you one question about how many surgeries does it take for a surgeon to be actually competent and experienced enough to do robotic surgeries where a patient can be assured that they're good at what they do? To, to gain competency, meaning that you're permitted to operate on a robot, you need a very few number of cases. However, to be uh, qualified and, and skilled is a different question. Um, I feel that you need to have at least 50 cases, um, some would say 100 cases, before your surgical skills are where they're at that gives your patients the best opportunity at onco oncologic cure as well as potency and continence after surgery. Dr. Canterbury, is there any benefit to adding hormone therapy to my husband's radiation treatment for prostate cancer? Uh, yes, there is in, in certain patients. Uh, generally speaking, we we classify patients into three risk groups of prostate cancer, either low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk prostate cancer. And the way we do that is by looking at their PSA score as well as their Gleason score. And if they're in an intermediate or high risk, those patients in particular have shown uh, great benefit in, in adjuvant hormone therapy during and, and after radiation therapy. And so uh, that being said, if you're an intermediate or high risk patient, then I would generally encourage the use of uh, adjuvant hormone therapy uh, before and during your radiation therapy. Dr. Canterbury, before I agree to surgery, uh, how can I be certain that my prostate cancer diagnosis is accurate? That's a tough question. Um, generally speaking, the diagnosis of prostate cancer is made by a pathologist. And so they look at the, the samples that your urologist gave to them under a microscope, and it, usually it's pretty obvious when they see cancer whether it truly is prostate cancer or not. Sometimes when there's some difficulties in actually coming up with a diagnosis, they'll send the, the specimens off to another lab for a second opinion. Um, and if you're truly curious and are truly worried that your diagnosis isn't correct, then I'd speak with your urologist and see if he couldn't facilitate a second opinion on your actual pathologic slides. Dr. Canterbury, my dad's considering surgery for his prostate cancer. Which is better, laparoscopic surgery or the robotic assisted surgery? Well, both are truly laparoscopic procedures. Uh, a laparoscopic prostatectomy is done without the aid of a robot, but still done through small incisions and has advantages of minimal pain and shorter hospital stay and, and less blood loss. A robot is brought in for the robotic portion of the case uh, to help the surgeons uh, uh, facilitate the, the intricacies of this particular surgery a little bit better. Um, it really depends on your surgeon. Some surgeons are, are very, very good at pure laparoscopic prostatectomies, and some are more comfortable doing robotic prostatectomies. It's very surgeon dependent, and, and I, would, I would ask you to speak to your surgeon himself and see what he's more comfortable doing. Dr. Canterbury, thank you so much for joining us here on ShareWeek.com. This has been great information. If you like more on the topic of prostate cancer and its treatment options, please go to our website at www.sharewick.com.